Hello everyone, welcome to a very special Friday product post. We've got a bunch of stuff to talk about, so let's just dive right in and see what kind of cool stuff we got for this week. So first up, we've got all these new servos from Hitech. Um, Hitech is a very well-known and very popular brand of servo motors, so we still have the current selection of motors that we have, but now we are carrying some different Hitech models as well. And I'm going to basically talk about the differences between maybe just like your standard off-the-shelf servo motor like this that is included in the SIK versus um, a higher end or slightly more expensive motor like a high-tech servo. Servos actually have a potentiometer in the base of them and it's lined up with this um, horn here on the top and when it spins it reads the servo or it reads the um, potentiometer value and it can tell what position it's at and you send it pulses um, across one of these pins and then it can you know put it at different positions so it's really good for angular positioning um, these typically only go about 180 degrees they're not necessarily good for going at a set speed like a standard motor would be they're just good for directional positioning the main things that you should be looking for in a servo is going to be the size the amount of torque it has or the amount of power it's going to have in its sweep and then you're also going to want to see the voltage range most all the servos we have are 4.8 to 6 volts somewhere around there and then you're also going to want to look at the um, range of motion some are 90 some are 180 there are some that are a full 360 and in addition to that you've got other features such as metal gears and i'll explain that in a bit and then also ball bearings and once i start taking these apart it'll become kind of apparent the difference between those so starting with this guy this is the hs 85 mg to give you a comparison this is um, about the size that comes in the um, sik this is the smallest servo that we have so it's a little bit bigger than that. So this guy for the size is about 42 to 49 ounce inches worth of torque, depending on if you're powering at 4.8 or 6 volts. And it comes with um, some mounting pieces. Uh, we've got all sorts of different little like rubber inserts. And then we've got a couple different horn attachments and the screws for that. So on pretty much all these servos, there's just going to be um, four screws on the bottom, and that'll take the case apart. And the first thing you notice is this is actually all metal up here. So where the um, plastic horn and the other attachments actually attach, it attaches to um, the metal spline. And if we take this off, we can see that all the gears on the inside are metal. Why that might be important to you? Well, let's say you're doing something like a hexapod or something like that, and it's walking and then it bumps into something, if you have plastic gears in your server, you could just strip all the teeth right off of those. But with having a metal gear, you're going to get a little bit more durability in there. And also if you're doing a lot of sweep commands or a lot of redundant um, movements, the plastic can wear down over time. So there's certainly the torque rating and how much power the motor can handle, but if you have a lot of resistance on those gears, you're going to snap off some of the um, teeth on the gears. So having a nice all metal gear set in here is actually quite nice. Um, you can see that this down here is the actual motor um, portion right here. The electronics hide under there and um, somewhere in this section is going to be the feedback potentiometer. So next up, we've got a slightly bigger one. This is the HS625MG. So the smaller one had a torque of uh, 42 to 49 ounce inches. So this one's actually gonna be 76 ounce inches. So it's almost twice as powerful, but um, as you can see, it's quite a bit larger as well. And just a size comparison back to the little tiny guy. There you go. So it's quite a bit bigger. So this one's actually 76 ounce inches worth of torque. Um, this is a 180 degree servo. And here are the accessories for the HS625MG. So we've got a sweep arm, this guy, that, and then this. So we've got quite a bit more options of attachment um, for the bigger one. This does have almost all metal gears. It doesn't have 100% metal gears, but it does have dual ball bearings on the shaft. So I'm gonna take the um, bottom off of this first. So you can see quite a bit um, bigger motor. Um, there's your board, and we've got the pot sitting down there. And then if we pop it open, we can see that it looks like um, this guy down here might be a plastic gear, but the rest of these are all metal. So still a lot nicer than um, you know an inexpensive all plastic gear motor. You can see the little stop here. Um, if you wanted to take that stop out, then that could turn it into a um, 
continuous rotation motor. And if we look at the top of the casing here, we can actually see some nice um, ball bearings inside the top there. So you have this motor, right? And you're going to have some sort of um, load on top of it. Now, if you know, we have just like a cardboard box that we're moving around, there's no real load you know, or weight on this. But let's say we have something really heavy or maybe something cantilevered out like that that you know, is going to pull it down. Having some nice sturdy ball bearings at this main output shaft gives you a little bit more durability. If you didn't have any bearings there, then you're basically just rubbing on the plastic. So ball bearings on the output shaft, high quality. So moving right along, we've got the HS425BB. And as the model name would indicate, this is ball bearing, but it is not metal gear. So if you're looking for um, you know, standard servo size, um, this guy, to give you a comparison, it's roughly the same size as the last one we talked about. And this guy comes with this little accessory pack. So there you go, just some um, basic mounting hardware and stuff. 425 BB is a very popular one by high tech. It's relatively inexpensive. It's just kind of a nice all around good standard size motor. And it does have ball bearings, but it doesn't have metal gears. It does have um, nylon gears instead. This one's going to have an output torque of about 46 ounce inches, so um, certainly not as much torque as the bigger one here. And it is 180 degree, and like I said, it does have ball bearings. Now, if you don't actually need the full ball bearings and need just, you know, an even simpler, or even more inexpensive motor, we've got the HS422. Um, this one is very similar to HS425, except for it doesn't have ball bearings. It is almost identical in size, and this torque rating is also 46 ounce inches. So it's got the same torque rating. The main difference between this one and the 425 is this one does not have the ball bearings. And so the HS422 comes with these parts. So pretty much the same parts assortment. Um, it comes with the 425 uh, minus this guy. I'm going to crack this open and show you what it does have in place though. And the first thing you can notice is this is actually plastic. And if we pop this off, see all plastic gears. And if we look in the top, we've just got just a metal insert and then we've just got a little ring here. So that substitutes for your bearing um, rather than actually having the ball bearing racetrack thing that um, the others have. Once again, if you're trying to do like a hex pod or something like that to where it could run into something and you could bend back one of those legs, you might get some stripping or you might get some performance issues if you're using all plastic gears. You might want to go to a metal gear. And lastly, we've got the one that everyone's probably been eyeing. Um, this is the HS805BB. So it is big. Um, here it is in comparison to the previous one. These guys had, um, what I say, about 70 or 46 ounce inches. This one was 79, and this one was like uh, mid 20s, I think it was. This guy is actually 275 ounce inch worth of torque, so it's got quite a bit of torque on it. And this actually draws about 800 milliamps while operating, so it's pretty beefy. You got to have. Um, you know, you gotta rethink your power supply when you use something like this. This does have a plastic spline, as you see. It is plastic gears inside, um, but as you can see, they're actually quite big. If you're doing something that's gonna strip these guys, you might wanna rethink your application. I mean, these are pretty big, pretty beefy gears. And you can see up here, we've got our ball bearing. It's a lot easier to see on these big guys. So that actually sits right in the top right there. Um, so that's what's giving this output shaft stability on the outer case. So those are the servos. And of course, we're not gonna have all these servos without doing some sort of demo. So let's see what we threw together. We took the biggest of the new high-tech servos and decided to find out what we could do with them. We decided that they were the perfect size and speed to do something like swing around a Nerf gun. So we built the Nerf Atrium Defense System. This allows you to harass your coworkers who are coming up the stairwell in the atrium of the office by inserting coins which buy you time on the turret. 
while the turret's in operation, you can use this joystick to aim the gun around the atrium and then fire nerf darts at people as they're, um, well, trying to come back to work from lunch. You uh, insert coins in the coin slot here, and this is our six coin acceptor, and it tells the Arduino that it's time to start the timer. When the gun starts functioning, it spins up the flywheels inside the Nerf gun and then turns on the servos so that you can actually operate the turret. And then for every cent that you put into that, you get two seconds of turret time. And that doesn't sound like a lot, but it scales up pretty quickly. For instance, if you drop a quarter in here, you get 50 seconds, almost a full minute of time on the turret. So there you have it, the Nerf Atrium Defense System. Next up, we've got a new product from Earth LCD. This is the AR LCD, a 3.5 inch color touchscreen display with an Arduino on the backside. You program it in the Arduino IDE and it has a screen attached, so it's kind of an all in one kind of deal. Um, I'm going to actually run through how to program this. It's got you know, a couple little steps in terms of how to install it and how to get it running. And I'll throw a couple example codes on here from the Arduino library that it comes with just to give you an idea of what it looks like and what it can do and how easy it is. So we've got a computer boot up here. First thing we gotta do is plug it in, of course. Now, the interesting thing about the AR LCD is that it doesn't actually use an FTDI or anything like that. It uses, um, I think it's using the PIC um, that's on there, um, the GPU, actually for all the serial communication. So what we need to do is we need to go over here to the computer and we need to install the drivers for it. Now conveniently, if we just go into control panel, we will see that the device pops up under device manager. You can see it's installing right now or trying to install and it shows up here under other devices under Earth LCD and it will not find a driver for it, but that's okay. Double click on it and we're gonna update the driver here. Go driver, update driver and we're gonna browse for the computer, click on browse, and interestingly enough, the driver is actually on the unit that shows up as a mass storage device. Without any drivers, it shows up as a mass storage device and actually has the drivers already on it, um, but to get the serial communication working, we need to load the drivers. We'll just point it to the root directory, um, hit OK, and then go through these dialogues, and boom, found the driver, we're gonna install that. So now this will allow us to see this in Arduino um, and then we can load code onto it. Uh, so we're gonna close this out, close that out, and you can see it is recognized and we're on COM5. So we don't need to be in Device Manager anymore. So we're gonna close all this out. And if we were to go into Arduino right now, we would see it under um, COM5 and we could upload code. But we're not quite done yet. We need to load the Arduino library. So we're gonna pull up our browser here we're gonna to go to store.earth.lcd slash ARLCD. We will have these links for you on the product page, so don't worry about remembering them. And we're gonna go here to downloads. And the site has moved, of course. Um, so here you go. We've got ARLCD downloads right there. And we're gonna to go to the um, software section. And if we look down here, we've got the library. So we're gonna go ahead and open the library and we're going to extract this into our Arduino directory. So Arduino libraries. Let's go ahead and extract that. There we go. Air LCD is right there. So now we can close out of all of this and then let's go back to the desktop and load Arduino. So let's load just the basic um, demo sketch that comes with this. We've actually already played with this one, so what you're seeing is actually something different than how they come. We're gonna load the basic um, example sketch on it. And so we'll just go down to examples, ARLCD, and then we're gonna do ARLCD test. We're gonna select an Uno, which it is selected, and then we're gonna select COM5 and upload. And there we go. So this is the um, basic demo it comes with. We've got a little slider here. Um, you know, we've got some different buttons. 
So there you go. Now let's um, load something different on here. I actually like, if we go into examples and then do this analog meter. Uh, first thing I'm gonna do is grab a breadboard and um, a potentiometer so we can actually um, have a potentiometer that interacts with the analog meter on the screen. And so I'm gonna use analog zero. We're gonna hit upload. So now we've got the sketch uploaded and you can see that this is actually um, corresponding to my knob. So I can turn it like that. And there you go. So pretty simple little demo here. And if we look back over at the code, I'll make this a little bigger, you can see that there's not a whole lot of code going on in here. You're at all familiar with um, doing any kind of graphical interfaces, especially on a color screen like this, they can be very complicated. Really, there's not a whole lot going on here. We've just got the LCD um, initialized here. We've got soft serial and some other stuff um, as libraries. Um, and then if we look down here, we've got the position, we've got the width, the height, and a couple other things, and then that's about all. We're just doing like an analog read on it, um, storing that value and displaying it. And we can do something simple like put this at zero, um, put this at zero, and then I'm gonna make it the full width of the screen, so 320, and this is a 240 pixel high, and we'll just, this should fill the whole screen and be centered in it. So we'll go ahead and upload that. There you go. So it's that easy and um, we can change certain aspects of it. Like down here, it's labeled A log zero. Let's just name this Greg for a videographer because he has to listen to me all day, every day. So there you go. Um, there's a lot of examples in here. So if we go down to the examples and then scroll down to AR LCD, um, there's a lot of stuff in here. It shows you how to draw arcs, um, do buttons, change colors, we've got a digital meter, um, we've got all sorts of different little demonstrations of how to use this screen. And since the library is already fully built out, you don't have to do a ton of code to get a lot of interesting stuff on here. So that is the AR LCD, and that is the quick start guide on how to get it running and how to start getting some code on there. So there you have it, a good old classic Friday product post. Um, we've got a bunch of new servos that are all disassembled. Don't worry, none of you will be getting any of these. Um, we've also got the very cool AR LCD if you're looking for a nice graphical interface that has a 3.5 inch color touchscreen display. And of course, we have the lovely demo for this week. So we will see you next week. Um, we do have something very big to announce next week. So be sure to check back then for even more new products.